Yesterday, Kisiaroji spoke about how based on purity of sila, purity of conduct, sila visuddhi, yogis go on to establish purity of mind, citta visuddhi. And he talked in general about the series of types of purity that happen. These are called visuddhi. And in, uh, he spoke in a general way. And he described what happens in the practice up to the stage of Uddiya Bhyanyana, uh, neither too briefly nor too much at length. Beyond that, the stages of knowledge, is, knowledge that occur beyond that, such as Bhyanyana, Adina and so on, those stages he will not describe uh, in terms of theory and practice because he does not want the yogis to go the wrong way. So uh, in, he has described up to the stage of Uddiya Bhyanyana how uh, speaking about the different knowledge, types of knowledge that occur. And when the yogi um, continues their practice, observing the stream of nama and rupa, mind and matter, and finally goes from observing this stream called pavata to its cessation, the realization of nibbana. The first experience of seeing nibbana is called sotapati mega, the path knowledge of the, of the stream winner. And once path knowledge arises, fruition knowledge, pala, jnana, is also sure to arise. It follows immediately. And once vipassana samadeti, the right view of vipassana, is complete, then the right view of the path, mega samadeti, the right view of fruition, pala samadeti, and the right view of reviewing knowledge called Pajavakana Jnana, which, which reviews what has happened uh, in the stages of path knowledge and fruition knowledge. Um, that these um, Pajavakana Pichawak, Samadeti occurs automatically and nothing special needed to make it happen. So yesterday, Sieroji spoke about this in a summarized way. When one realizes the path knowledge of a stream winner, Sota Patimaga, one gains seven benefits. And yesterday he spoke about these, um, in the, the first part of these, in, in a rather broad way. And today he will continue. In the text, it says that there are seven benefits in summary to gaining the knowledge of Sotapati Maga, or the path knowledge of the stream runner, winner. And the first of these, uh, uh, first of all, before one practices, there's no Vipassana knowledge that has arisen, and therefore it hasn't ripened, and therefore Sotapati path knowledge, the path knowledge of a stream winner, has not yet arisen, not yet occurred. And this is how it was before, but now one is met with the teaching of the Buddha. And when one relies on a good teacher, good friend and gets the correct method and then and makes effort to apply it then one gains purity of mind and based on that develops knowledge so up until the time that uh, this path knowledge of the stream winner has arisen 
one has not destroyed any kilesas at all. But with path knowledge, Sotapati path knowledge, one destroys the kilesas that would take one to the lower realms of apaya. This is like a huge lump of kilesas. And um, so th- this is the essential benefit that one gets. And one is also freed of the false view of self, Sakaya Deti, and one is also freed of the belief in rites and rituals as a way to salvation or purity, and also to skeptical doubt. So these these three mind states are connected with either greed or with delusion, or greed and uh, either with greed and delusion or just delusion. So these, this is what is eliminated. And because these, um, what they're called is apaya-related kilesas, kilesas that would send us to the lower realms, because these are limited, uh, eliminated, then one, there's no possibility that one will be born in the hell realms or in the realm of the hungry ghosts or as an animal, or as, uh, as one of the angry ghosts, a surakaya. One is free of these types of rebirth. And there are, in addition to that, there's no, there's no more than seven lifetimes ahead of one. An eighth lifetime will not occur. So, and following that, uh, thus, there's a uh, following that seventh lifetime. There will be no more suffering in the rounds of samsara, samsara vata dukkha. So thus, it is said that anamataga samsara du, samsara vata dukkha samodan soseti. That sotapati mag dries up this endless occurrence of nama and rupa. Nama and Rupa and the three rounds of the cycles of the kilesas, kama, actions, and vipaka results, these are like an ocean. There's no end of them to be seen. But with the realization of the first path, there is now a limit to this ocean of samsaric suffering. There's a limit on how many lifetimes there are to come. One will only be reborn in the human and the deva realms, and there will only be seven more lifetimes. So if there is a new lifetime, then although one wants to remain young, one will age. Although one wants to be healthy, one will get sick. Although one wants to live, one will die. Because of having a body, there will be physical suffering. Because of having a mind, there will be mental suffering. With regard to our family, when there's a loss within our family, then we'll suffer sorrow. When our, when our possessions suffer ruin or loss, then we'll feel sorrow. And this is suffering and most of what most of what we experience in life is suffering but people like this life so if one eliminates the new lives the the kama that would cause new lifetimes then that won't happen and if one eliminates the kama the seeds for rebirth in the realms of apaya this also will not happen so therefore it's said that this uh, helps dry up the ocean of samsara. And the third benefit one gets is sabapaya dwarani pitaheti. That means that the, all the doors to apaya are closed. Apaya is a place that is completely devoid of happiness. 
There is no happiness or peace in a paya. And without realizing the first path knowledge, then there is still the possibility that one can reborn, be reborn in those, in those realms due to kama actions performed in one's past. The door will still be open if one did any actions that can lead to the, to the lower realms, either in past lives or in the present life. So when one re- realizes the first path knowledge, Sotapati Maga, then this door to the lower realms is closed automatically. So yesterday, this is what Sayadawji spoke about, and today he will continue this topic, um, giving you the headlines of the different benefits. The fourth benefit is Satanang Arya Dananang. Samukhi Bhavan Karoti, that the path knowledge of, of the Sotapanna brings this benefit. Because Vipassana knowledge becomes complete, this Sotapati Maga arises, which sees Nibbana, and this gives one seven types of possessions, beginning with faith, sada, and morality, sila. So there are seven benefits that one comes to possess, and one sees them, it is said, as if they are right in front of one's eyes. One gains these seven possessions of a noble one, and one becomes wealthy with this unseen wealth, invisible wealth. This type of wealth is more important than material, owning material possessions. Because of walking the right path, one reaches the safe destination. One walks the forerunner path and one realizes the safe haven of Nibbana and one understands that one got to this place by walking the path, the forerunner path. So one no longer follows wrong paths. So it is said, mecha mega, uh, sorry, I wrote it down. The, it, it dispels this, one dispels this wrong, the wrong path. Uh, lets go of it, drops it, discards it. So this mecha-mega, wrong, the wrong path, it has eight parts. And the first is mecha deti wrong view. And there's also mecha-vitaka, wrong objective or wrong application of the mind. Then there's mecha vacha, the wrong speech. Mecha kamenta, wrong action. And mecha ajiva, wrong livelihood. Further, there's mecha vayama, wrong effort. Mecha sati, wrong sati. And mecha mecha samadhi, wrong samadhi. So this is called Mecha Mega, and it has these eight parts. So one discards this type of path. One no longer walks this path because one knows the correct path, and through that one reached the safe haven. Thus one continues to keep, to walk that correct path and discards the wrong path. If one walks the wrong path, then one will meet up with enemies and dangers. So no one is free of this if one walks the wrong path. This is what will happen. 
And if one wants to know experientially, one can just try it and see. If one is not free of the of enemies, then one won't be free of dangers. So enemies come in two forms, internal and external. Our internal enemies are the, the kilesas of lobha, dosa, and moha, greed, hatred, and delusion, on a gross level, on a medium level, and on a refined level. These are called vera in Pali, and the best English translation I know is enemy. So uh, these are in our being. These are called kilesa vera, the enemy of the defilements, akusala vera, the enemy of unwholesomeness, internal enemies, and they're also called near the nearest enemies. And the other kind of enemy, the Pugala Vera, this is external and it can be an enemy such as another human being, one, one human and another sometimes become enemies, or could be in a forest, there might be animals, or there may be enemies that one sees and there may be enemies one doesn't see. One doesn't see. But with the realization of Sotapati path, then all enemies are quelled. And this um, enemies bring, a, bring out a, a fear in the mind. So this is quelled with the realization of so, Sotapati path. So how good it is. If we want to get benefits in our life, if we want to have a good life, then we follow the path that is instructed by the Buddha. And as when parents have a child that is obedient and listens to what the parent says and then does accordingly, they feel um, that that person, that child is behaving like a true son or daughter. For children that don't obey their parents' words, don't listen to their parents' words. Um, those are not like true sons and daughters. Only when a child listens to the instructions that a parent gives out of loving kindness and compassion and then follows is one behaving like a true child of their parents. So when one follows the instructions of the Buddha, the teaching of the Buddha, then one reaches the point where one's internal enemies are all quelled. So one can think, when one gets that type of benefit, how great one's feeling will be towards the Buddha who is like a father. So it is because one listens to the instructions, the teachings of the Buddha, and then walks along the path as instructed, that one gets to the safe place. And this is because of following the words of the Buddha. So following the words of the Buddha in this way, to the extent that one reaches the safe haven, this makes one a true son or a true daughter of the Buddha. And lastly, the texts say that in addition to these seven benefits, there are hundreds more that come that result from realizing Sotapati Magga, the path knowledge of a stream winner. So the the most essential ones were mentioned specifically in the text, these seven. But and, and the others are secondary results that come about. And they are in the hundreds. So these come about as a result of gaining the path. So to explain again, 
Because one walks the forerunner path, Puba Bhaga Maga, Vipassana knowledge arises stage by stage and it becomes mature. When it becomes mature, then one goes from observing the endless stream of mind and matter arising and passing away to, to its cessation, apavata. So one simply, uh, by observing every single arising object with ardent effort, accurate aim, so as to know, by doing this, eventually the object observed and the observing mind are both cut off and one comes to realize Nibbana. So the path knowledge, Sotapati path knowledge, eliminates the most important forms of the kilesas. These are the very gross level of loba, very gross level of dosa and moha. These this gross, extremely coarse, wild level of greed, hatred, and delusion is eliminated to no return. That is to say that there are lesser forms of greed, hatred, and delusion that still remain. But the forms that would cause us to commit transgressive actions based on greed, uh, based on anger and delusion, these, uh, the ones without, uh, sorry, the ones that would lead us to perform such acts without any shame, without any fear, uh, these are gone. That level of kilesa is gone. Throughout our lifetimes, there has been loba, greed, and then uh, demanding greed, greed that want, just wants has to get what it's want or else, extreme greed, and anger, resentment, bearing grudges, dislike, and not knowing, knowing incorrectly. So these, these three, greed, hatred, and delusion, are the roots of unwholesome mentality. And if one doesn't know the truth, if one doesn't know correctly, then loba can arise. When one sees a likable object, loba can arise, greed can arise. Uh, one can have extremely selfish greed, extreme greed, and dislike, anger, resentment, bearing grudges, these can arise and ignorance this is very this is really very bad it's actually not it's not so bad if all one doesn't know is the right path but when one knows um, when one when one's belief is in error or one uh, one walks the wrong path that's what is really difficult, makes big problems. So not knowing correctly, not knowing the truth or knowing wrongly, this is avijja. And if one errs due to this, then when one encounters a desirable object, there will be greed or there will be Demanding, one one will only be satisfied if one gets it. There will be extreme greed. When one meets up with an undesirable object, then there will be dislike, there will be anger, hatred, and so on. Extreme anger. And in humans, this is what happens. And when there is 
lobha, greed, then there is also there um, there can also be wrong view, wrong deity. It occurs together with lobha. The the view that there is a self, for example, atta, jiva atta, a life force or self inside. And this atta, another belief is that this atta is part of a supreme, ultimate paramata atta, paramata. And this supreme atta causes the individual self to live or to die. This is a, these are wrong beliefs. And if one believes in the wrong way, then one will also be indecisive, wavering about what is true. And this is called vichikicha, or skeptical doubt. So thus not knowing is very uh, bad. So if one doesn't know the truth or, or knows in the wrong way, then one can, uh, when one meets up with someone who's a good speaker, one can accept all types of things that are not true. Um, and this belief in rites and rituals as a way to purity or to salvation is called sila bata paramasa. Sila means like a habit and bata, vata means practice. So anyhow, this is a type of when one believes in right, rights and wrong uh, rights and rituals as a way to salvation this is called sila bata paramasa so thus um, there are these things wrong knowing in the wrong way having wrong belief and having following the wrong path and all these are dispelled by the first path knowledge sotapati path Thus, one won't walk the wrong way anymore. One will only walk the correct path. Among the loba, dosa, and moha, which is dispelled by Sotapati Magga, the path knowledge of the stream winner, among these is the loba that is connected with deity, wrong view. Deity mean D I T T H I means another type of belief. And there's a view that is called Sakaya Deity. Sakaya is uh, is explained as Santo Kayo. Santo means that it is directly observable, can be seen right in front of us. And Kayo means group of mind and matter, Nama and Rupa. In hearing, there's not uh, just one little bit. There's a group of many, many uh, particles that make up the ear the ear base. So there's many, many things grouped together to make up this receptor for hearing. And the sound wave that comes and strikes the ear also is many, many particles, many, many waves um, of sound grouped together. And the consciousness that arises, the mentality that arises when the sound wave strikes the ear Two is not just one thing, but it's there's hearing consciousness, contact, and feeling, a group of mentality. So this group is called kaya. A group of things is called kaya. And thus sakaya means that a group, a collection of mind and matter that is directly observable that is evident. So this is what Sakaya means. 
and Sakaya Deity is a false view that occurs regarding this uh, collection of mind and matter, which is directly observable. One thinks this because one doesn't observe the mind and matter that is really there, therefore one doesn't know it as mind and as matter. And not knowing it as mind and matter, one thinks it's a person, or it's a man, it's a woman. And one also thinks that in this person there's a a self, a jiva atta. So this type, this belief is sakaya deity, a false belief that is based on uh, what the the kaya that can be really observed. A sotapanna no longer believes in this false view. So, and when one comes to uh, practice and un- and realizes the distinction between mind and matter, nama and rupa, one knows from that point onward that when you remove mind and matter, when you remove these two things, there is nothing else left in our experience. So from that point on in the practice, the false view called Sakaya Deti is discarded on a momentary basis. The path knowledge of the stream winner discards this false view for good. Sakaya Deti, this uh, form of wrong view, occurs connected with greed. Thus, when Sakaya Deti is eliminated, the greed or loba that would arise together with Sakaya Deti is also automatically dispelled. In order to dispel the greed and the, and the wrong view in a self that is connected with greed, the wrong view called Sakaya Deti, to dispel this, one needs to know the correct method. So one has to practice the correct method. And this can't happen without learning the method first. So if we don't know the method true, we must study, learn it till we do. And then uh, knowing the method still, if one doesn't practice, one won't come to know. So one, one, uh, in order to know what is to be known, one has to apply this correct method. And applying it, one will come to know the group of rupa, the group of of nama. One will come to know rupa kaya and nama kaya. Because one observes, one comes to know. Isn't that so? So in knowing, ignorance is dispelled and one sees clearly. And at that point, there won't be any more doubt. There's no wavering because one sees clearly. So in order to know what is to be known, we observe applying the practice. And we, um, when we practice, we remove the skeptical doubt through seeing what is happening in oneself. We become free of wrong belief and we also become free of doubt. As Sayadoji said, by following the correct method, sila, samadhi, and panya comes to be in one's being. One's physical and verbal behavior become clean. One's mind becomes clean 
and knowledge occurs so that one sees clearly. So one won't believe in doctrines that do not involve any sort of practice. Uh, For example, uh, the Lord will save you uh, without any type of practice at all. Uh, Doctrines which are mere belief uh, and just by believing one can make one's physical, verbal, and and mental behavior clean. One won't accept this type of doctrine so in order for physical, verbal, and mental behavior to become clean, there needs to be a good, there needs to be a good practice. There needs to be correct practice. And knowing that, one will no longer f- follow the wrong path, knowing the correct path. Thus this um, wrong, wrong view called Siddhavata Paramasa, the belief in rites and rituals as a method of becoming pure is something one will no longer accept once one has walked the correct path and reached the safe destination one will no longer follow the wrong path thus Sotapati path eliminates the belief in a self called Sakaya Deity the belief that rites and rituals will lead to purity of uh, mind and body, and the uh, skeptical doubt, Vichy Kecha. It eliminates these three things, plus it eliminates the loba, dosa, and moha that are connected with these beliefs or with skeptical doubt. The realization of Sotapati path eliminates kilesas that were not previously eliminated because one did not practice. But because of following the forerunner path, developing the forerunner path, the Sotapati path, the path knowledge of the stream winner arises and eliminates these kilesas. <laughs> 